Slim Thug brought me to the mansion, man. I appreciate this, man. Appreciate y'all, man. First off, big salute. I see y'all, you know, doing y'all thing. I follow y'all on the gram, and Definitely. I know that's the new way. I don't even look at internet no more, you know what I'm saying? No websites, it seems like, you know, that shit kind of played out. You get all your news from, you know, the gram and social mm -hmm. media. And I see y'all doing y'all thing the Texas way. You know, I see y'all got a lot of Texas artists on there right. I never heard of. So, you know, I like what y'all doing. Definitely, definitely, man. I, I want to say I appreciate the opportunity because you're one of the few in Texas that, you know, reach back to the youth and do the remixes right, and, and right. stuff like that. But we're going to get to that later. Um, so, how tall are you? Like, what, 6'4", 6'5"? 6'6". 6'6". So, in school, was you hooping? Was you playing nah. football? What was you doing? <laughs> in school, man, actually, uh, man, uh, I'm I'm from I'm the youngest of seven, you know. It's uh, four boys, three girls. We come from the hood, basically. You know what I'm saying? So the north side, correct? The north side. Okay. So at this time, like when in middle school, I didn't move to the northwest side. I'm from Homestead, but I didn't move half. You know, uh, half. You know, after I turned like about 10, 11, I think I moved to Acres Home. We always moved. Matter of fact, I probably been to probably 15 schools. No telling. Like I, I used to always be in and out of school because we stay moving apartment to apartment yeah. you know so um basically man fucking with that i just uh i just kind of went to acres home with it man and we was over there you know that's basically where i come up at over there acres home area like uh, for my teenage years okay so was you rapping then or was you just like you know in the streets actually when i was a kid my brother bought me a um uh, he bought me a um a I was like 12, he bought me a karaoke machine, so I was like fucking with it on that type of shit. Like at the highs, just uh, with the freestyles and going to different parties in the neighborhoods and freestyling and shit like that. But I didn't get real about rap life until I got with Swisher Highs back in 98. I was 17. I was in high school, 11th grade, you know what I'm saying? And we did that shit and it was over. I had played ball in middle school back then, but I was living on Homestead and um, going to school in Acres Home, so I would have to catch a fucking bus from, you know, uh, the other side of town. So I was like, man, fuck that basketball. I know shit. people are looking at you like, <laughs> I mean, back then, what was you like, six foot in high school? What was you like, six foot? I was six? about six foot back then. Coaches, so, coaches used to stay on me, man, all the time. Like, but I just couldn't see it. You know, I was in the hood, man. I was, I wasn't trying to, I couldn't understand staying after school. Like, I didn't have the discipline to understand, man. You can stay after school, play basketball, and you know, get a hundred million, you know what I'm saying, right now. So it's like, I didn't understand that or believe that. So I was like, trying to get home early. Coaches used to stay trying to get me to play. I was like, fuck that shit. Now I'm on my son, he in the ninth grade. I'm on him, hey man, you gotta play ball, you gotta play ball. Right. You know, cause he my height already, in ninth grade, 14. So crazy. crazy, yeah, but you know, and at that age, like I said, I'm the youngest of seven. Mama used to work seven days a week. 12 hours a day, she couldn't watch us. I used to, at, at 12, I was out there, you know, I was in the streets, you know, just, you know, like, you know, roaming around, not doing nothing too crazy, you know, we in the hood, so we ain't really had no real money or nothing like that, or doing no real crazy shit, just petty crimes, that's it, though. What was it like growing up on the north side? Like, did you have a, was it a healthy home with your mom and dad, or was it Nah, it's just home? a single parent home, my mom. I, I have never even met my dad. Not one cool. day in your not life? Not one day in my life I ever met my dad. But yeah, he did though now, so it's like, but at the same time, like, I don't feel, you know, I don't be like, damn, I wish I had a daddy. Like, I don't feel like it affected me because I'm, I'm so on my own. Like, that's just my personality, you know, I like to do shit my own way. I like to, you know, be in charge of my own shit, you know, so. Yeah, so it didn't affect you growing up at all? Because it affects I don't a lot feel of kids like growing it. up. That's what I hear, you know, that's where everybody go back to the childhood. And I can see it, I can see it. I can see how it affects some kids. But even now, like, I've never, i never been like that. Like I was 12, 13 driving, you know, taking mama to work you in middle school, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I always kind of had that man mentality. Like nobody was telling me, hey, you got to go to school every day. Or, you know, you got to be home at this time. Like I kind of did what I wanted to do because I wasn't supervised like that. Yeah. But at the same time, I was smart enough to not be a dummy and, and do no real dumb shit that's going to fuck my life out, you right. know? So 16, 17, you were rapping uh, on the serious tip or was that just playing around freestyle? Man, uh, we had actually had a group back in the day called CMB way back in the day. I had to be 14, 15. Like we put like a single or two out, you know, just my brother, you know, paying for the shit. 
but uh, at, like I say, when when I turned 17, I went to a house party, not at a house party, it was something they used to call All Star over there in the Acres Home area where all the local high school kids would go party. And uh, basically, man, Watts was the DJ, Michael Watts was the DJ. I used to always buy his shit from, since I lived on Homestead, buy his mixes. So uh, I kind of freestyled, went over there. Uh, Lil Mario, he already been over there before the Swisher High. So me and Lil Mario and J-Dow got together. We went to Watts' house for the first time and um, did Swisher 9-8. And after that shit, it was just like instant. So it Swisher was, House was already formed before y'all went to his crib? Nah, it wasn't really. It was it was a few rappers over there, but it wasn't like, it maybe it was about about one or two flows out, but it wasn't really no crew or nothing. It was just like, you know, it was a couple freestyles. But So the name Swisher House was already formed and everything? I think he used to call it Swisher Tapes. Right. He used to call it CD Swisher Tapes. And I think that they kind of made the Swisher House like what we are. You know, as That's we all house. came together, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so what is Swisher? Where does that? Where does that come from? Like from Swisher, Swisher Sweets, Sweets okay. I guess. Yeah. I'm guessing he, he, you know, because it was a, a mix. So they say a Swisher mix. You know what I'm right. saying? Like I say, he was a DJ. I used to buy his shit back in the day. It's basically he was doing what Screw did. You know what right. I'm saying? So. That's just how how it started, you know what I'm saying? With Watts doing his own little mixes. Right, okay, so you're 16, 17, 18. Right. Swisher House is growing. Now, you know, at that time, there was no internet. You had to go no. out on the streets, you had to grind. These days, a lot right. of rappers are lazy, they just sit behind the computer. How was it back then? Like, was y'all selling out of the trunks? Like, how was it? That's the foundation, though, man. That's how I can still get money today. It's because back in, in like I say, in 9-8, we did Swisher 9-8. And uh, what we did in Swisher House, I feel like DJ Scrutum dominated the game. Southside was running the whole, it wasn't no Northside rap, period. You know, it was a few rappers who was doing their thing, but as far as like how we do our shit, like what we was ripping Northside, like they was ripping Southside, it wasn't really none of that. So, you know, uh, we jumped out there and the shit just caught fire, man. You know, we was broke at first, so, you know, at first it was just like, you know, we coming from the hood where I'm selling two for fives and you know doing crumb shit yeah. to where oh shit you know we making a thousand out for this a thousand out for that like you know and i'm in high school you know so it's like it kind of just took out fast before i was out of high school i had like eighty thousand in the stash so it's like yeah. you feel me like i'm young all off of like rap out for selling cds and tapes back then you got to think about it it's like Crazy. so so this is how my grind started i had to go uh, you know, store to store. Me and my brother got a rental car and um, drove out of I-10 towards San Antonio. Went to every, got a, a yellow page. Went to every single CD and tape store. Hey man, you know y'all got this new switch out, y'all got this. Now, nah, okay, well we gonna put it in here on consignment. Y'all call us if y'all need some more. You know, we put in a lot of leg work. We went to wherever it was. Selling CDs and tapes, man. And so we when just... y'all were putting y'all CDs in the store, did y'all get did y'all get like a piece of that, or was y'all just getting yeah, it yeah. to the store to see if it was moving? No, we was selling it. Everything back there was for sale. Like not only that, back then that's when it was the most beautifulest, <laughs> and that's my own new word, beautifulest. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, cause you gotta understand, we had our own kind of major label down here back then in nineties. It was nothing but independent rappers. You had, uh, you know, you had DJ Scrutum doing their thing. You had Rap a Lot who started independent. They was like the majors of, of us though. They, you know, ran yeah. shit. Like uh, you had the uh, Rec Shops. The um, you know, everybody had a label basically back then. Botany Boys had their own label. Like everybody had their own label because we was going through Southwest Wholesale. That was a distribution company okay. out here, right. you know, in Houston. And they'll get your shit in all the stores around, you know, that's regular CDs, that's like real albums. But as far as mixtapes, we went out and did the same thing they was doing basically. We was Southwest Wholesale. We'll make the CD from scratch, make the tape from scratch, take it to each store in Texas. We'll go around all Texas till we cover all the Texas stores and then They'll get, they'll get, I remember they call us, hey man, we sold out, we sold out. And all we had to do from there was ship it to them, drive it to each town, drop them off. We picking up money. We was, the tapes was $10 for retail. We was making $5 wholesale off each tape. The CDs was 15, we made eight off of them wholesale. So every CD we sell a hundred, we get $800. You know so how was y'all getting the buzz to sell out in stores? Like what were y'all doing? Like I'm saying, that 
wrecking them flows. The shit was just, that's what I'm saying. So like, it was just word of mouth. It was just word of mouth, man. It was like, like I say, everybody was independent back then. So like everybody was dropping shit. It was, it started with us just doing under, well, me just doing underground shit. Then I get on the song with ESG and Brazen Phase. So now we sharing fans. I'm waking up people who never heard of Slim Thug and they saying, oh, they doing this here. You know, so we just kind of took it on the road. The difference between us was DJ Screw was the king, but he ain't, he, he sold this shit from his house. He didn't go out and hit the road so much and put them everywhere in different stores. We took advantage of that. We put out shit in different stores, called motherfuckers from out of town and made, you know, built these relationships so we can just ship our shit and pick up a check every month. What's know? so crazy about that is back then there was no YouTube. No internet, no nothing. Like, right. And, 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 and although we have more outlets these days, artists aren't making that much money right. off of that. Like, that's crazy. So, yeah, so like, that was the golden days of being a rapper to me because you had so many ways to get paid. You can, you know, you can sell a CD, a tape, but at the same time, what we did different than these rappers is we went to each city, each town. I'm talking about not the just the Dallas and San Antonio. I'm talking about the little each small town in between these motherfuckers, because yeah. we didn't did the the, the, the thousand dollar shows, the, you know, to the two thousand to and halls all around this motherfucker. We didn't shook everybody hand. We didn't took pictures with everybody around this motherfucker or their daddy or whoever it may be, you know. So we put in a lot of groundwork that made us be able to last this long because we've been not just in the Dallas, we've been in all the little, you know, yeah. little East country Texas, towns and East Texas, Texas, all that. Yeah. We've been touching these people's hands and building relationships with these people for years, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, do you think uh, an artist nowadays could do the same blueprint y'all did and it will work? Or do y'all think the internet is just so oversaturated that, you know, CDs, they don't really move how they used to? Honestly, I don't believe in CDs like that no more. I ain't wow, gonna lie. That's crazy. I mean, I don't really believe in CDs no more. It's Cause I don't listen to them. You know, I don't really like motherfuckers give me a demo. I don't even got nowhere to really play it. The Escalade, cool, but you know, most of the time the new cars don't even come with a CD player. So it's like we had to go through those changes though. We had the CD and tape to where the CD took the tape out the game, where nobody uh, you know, fuck with tapes no more. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it turned into the internet. The internet started doing shit, and that and, and that made it where we motherfuckers bootlegging, so we was losing our loads wholesale. So that was a, we had to hustle through that shit. So then it went to iTunes. Okay, yeah, iTunes yeah. started doing the okay where well you can buy my album on iTunes. We was losing a lot. Now, nah, matter of fact, I'm gonna take it back. Before that, with the CDs and tapes, we lost when we first took the L was when Best Buy came around. Cause Best Buy came with that 999 shit. They was buying in bulk. They ain't even give a fuck about selling CDs. They just wanted to get people in their stores. Yeah. So when Best Buy started opening up these stores and selling these CDs so cheap, it made all the mom and pop stores close. Oh. Back then, it was a lot of black, you know, mm -hmm. owned businesses and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Sam yeah, and stuff like Latinos, that. Latinos, all that, yeah. you know, like it was good. Like it was a lot of, small you know cd and tape stores yeah. that we benefited off of best buy shut all that shit down then the internet came and shut all the shit down even more then um you know we got with itunes we was doing our thing figured that hustle out now it's streaming Stream. you know what yeah. i'm saying so it's just like the shit keep changing but it's good and bad and all that you know we might not make as much like by selling cds and tapes like that but at the same time we could put a CD out on the internet right now and it can touch everybody versus, you know, uh, back in the day, you had to have a CD in one of those stores. So a spot in Virginia might not have my album when it come out because I'm independent, you know what I'm saying? And that's why you needed a major label back then. But now, shit, you can put the shit on, on iTunes and that shit everywhere in the world. So shit, nobody should be signing. You know, for the most part, shit. Right, so you being 18, 19, you graduated high school with 80 grand off of music. Yeah. How did your mom react to that? My mom ain't never believed that shit, like that it was gonna be, I was gonna be a rapper. You know, we from the hood, like nobody believe in that type of shit. Like we thinking, get a job, go to college shit. You know what I'm saying? So I just had to like, like I say, man, I didn't listen to nobody. You know, I kind of, I was never ignorant. I knew I was smart. I knew, you know, I knew what I had to do, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't like, 
I'm, I got brothers who older than me who was going in and out of jail. So we'll have to do the drives, you know, to go see him. And I see she already broke, but got to put money on his books. And, you know, I didn't witness all my homeboys on the corner go to jail, sell dope, go to jail for crack, come home, sell dope, go to jail for crack. Like, I seen the whole circle, everything. So, you know, I already knew I was too smart to do the dumb shit. So, you know, um, I just kind of took everything into my own hands, man. And when I seen that the shit can make some money and living great, when I when Watts told me, hey, man, you bring me back this off of this and this off of that, that's all I needed to see. Once I seen how to get the money, shit, I just got more serious, started dropping more shit and get more focused, you know what I'm saying? How, how far did you think Switch the House uh, expanded? Because, you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, shit. giving out CDs in all over Texas, but did y'all ever, like, expand to Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, Oklahoma? How big do you think it got? Man, Switch the House is worldwide, been worldwide, been bigger than we ever knew it was. We was, you know, motherfuckers is hitting me from everywhere. Hawaii is because of the of the uh, military for the most part, like, cause they hit their, they get over there and go overseas and expose more people to, you know, more motherfuckers to the shit. Same thing with colleges. You know, people come down here from wherever they from and go back home with the shit and wake up they people. The shit was worldwide, man. Same like Screw, Screw was worldwide. You know, the shit just traveled, you know, cause if you came to Houston, Houston was dominated by that. It wasn't nothing else but that, you know, so you had to like it. So they just took it back home with them and woke people up, you know, so we was getting money all over the world. All right, did you graduate school after mm -hmm. you made that 80 grand? I graduated. I used to have a slab on swingers, fresh set of glass folds for Mr. Davis, the real swingers back in the day, yeah. man, in the teacher's parking lot, man. Like Crazy. Yeah, all that, man. We was, I graduated though. Like I say, man, I ain't no dummy. Like, I ain't never been no dummy. I ain't never look up the dumb shit, you know what I'm saying? So I was always minding my business, not worried about what the next motherfucker doing, but trying to get to the money, you know? And that's just how, how it is and how it been.